If paint colors were Mean Girls, cadmium red would definitely be one of the plastics. Artists tend to have a love-hate relationship with this color, it certainly divides opinion. It's a stunning, opaque, bold red that's a staple in so many basic paint sets, yet it's toxic, expensive, and doesn't mix well with others. Cadmium red initially replaced the highly toxic mercury-based vermilion, but even though cadmium paint has a very low toxicity, there are still concerns over long-term environmental harm of any cadmium in landfills. So we can't rely on this pigment being around forever. Sometimes the strong, opaque nature of this color is exactly what an artist needs, but I find myself preferring reds that have more subtle mixing capabilities. Because it is such a warm red, it's best mixed with other warm colors. You can mix it with yellows to get beautiful bright oranges or a variety of useful browns and grays. Though it's preferable to use transparent yellows, like gamboge or Indian yellow, instead of the opaque cadmium yellows to avoid too heavy a bodied look. Also, you can mix some lovely muted purples and browns, but you'll never be able to mix a bright violet. Because cadmium is such a warm, leaning red with even a tinge of yellow, this yellow stifles out any purple, its complementary color. To mix a vibrant violet, you'll need a cooler red like permanent rose or permanent alizarin crimson. Cadmium red is chalky, bright, and opaque with a very high tinting strength, and this combo makes it hard to use in a subtle, nuanced way in color mixing. And because it's opaque, unless you mix it with transparent rather than other opaque colors, you might end up with muddy or heavy mixes that can appear flat. So though cadmium red will always be favored by some, other artists tend to look for alternative orangey red or scarlet colors. Colors that are perhaps less toxic, less expensive, and maybe a little bit easier to use in mixes. Most cadmium red hues are made with pearl reds, which are the closest replacement in opacity and color. Naphthol red is also popular. It's slightly more vibrant and intense, creating cleaner color mixes. However, it also fades faster. But it's very easy to find this color sold at pretty much any paint manufacturer. Azo Red is an economical red that shows up in a lot of beginner paint sets. It's still quite bright, but it's weaker in tinting strength and doesn't have many advantages over quinacridones. You can see that the texture here is a little sticky. But if the heaviness and opacity is what you're trying to get away from with cadmium red alternatives, then Perilin Red is much more transparent. It's similar to the color of cadmium red medium. We're much luckier than the artists of the past and have a lot more colors to choose from. However, some artists still choose to use the highly poisonous mercury-based vermilion pigment. It requires great care to paint with this color safely, but it is a slightly more nuanced color to work with than cadmium. It has the beautiful quality of becoming more orange as it gets lighter without having to add any yellow into the mixture. Here I've demonstrated with a vermilion hue because I don't use this poisonous pigment, but you can see that this color is not necessarily representative of the true vermilion. It's much pinker than the original. And just a reminder, when a paint color has the name hue in the title, it means that it's a color that's mimicking an original pigment that's either too toxic, too expensive or rare, and it uses different pigments to achieve a similar look. My favorite paint color to use in this scarlet color space is called Vermilion Extra by Old Holland. It uses pigment PR251. Unfortunately, it's very rare. I've only found this paint color sold by Old Holland. I don't see it in other brands. And it somehow manages to be more expensive than actual cadmium, which itself is a very expensive paint color pigment. But I have to say it's so much more compatible in mixing with other colors on my palette. In this example, it looks a little more orange than it appears in real life, and it's really fantastic for those areas around the cheeks or the mouth that require a little bit more orangey, pinky tint to them. I don't use this color as much as other earthy reds like Venetian red, but it's still very handy for certain details across a variety of skin tones. I'm currently using it to paint clothing that has much more vibrant, saturated colors than you'd ever see in the skin, and I find this useful to create those bright scarlet tones. If you hear the word extra in a paint color name, it means that the paint color is more hardy and light fast than an original pigment. And in this case, it doesn't use any vermilion pigment at all, but rather an alternative. Reds are notoriously fugitive, so many reds will have paint color alternatives that say 
rose matter extra or permanent alizarin crimson or something like that. It's always useful to have an orangey scarlet red on your palette. However, Cadmia Red has just as many downsides as it does upsides and it's really acquired taste that painters tend to either love or hate. I've definitely gone off Cadmia Red over the years. I used to love how bold and opaque it was, but now I'm trying more subtle and layered techniques like glazing. I prefer to use more transparent and weaker tinting strength colors. That's why I've looked for an alternative and found a number that I love to use. Basically, we're a lot luckier than the old masters in terms of the paint colors we have access to, so it's good to know what's available and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using different colors so that you can make the best choice for you.